Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to me once again fixing or working on the 175. We took this thing to the drag strip a few weeks ago now and it ran great until it didn't. So I'll play those clips for you and we'll come back and see what we need to do to fix this thing. All right guys, so this is the test and tune night at Wabash Valley in Terre Haute, Indiana. Uh, we made a few hits this night um, this first one, we had a 34 tooth sprocket on it, so the sprocket we're going to use for the one mile. Uh, we just wanted to get a feel for it, see how the bike ran with it. We knew it would obviously be slower in the eighth, but just wanted to take a test hit with it. definitely sandbagging pretty hard that bike is way faster than mine but anyways we got a good data log from that run the AFRs looked great um, we wanted to switch back to the 42 sprocket uh, so we can have an A to B comparison from our last test in two night where we ran five and a half pounds of boost uh, with this sprocket and with that setup we ran an 11.0 at 60 mile an hour so we wanted to see how much we could gain um, with the bump up to eight and a half pounds boost. So the bump of three pounds of boost netted us about five mile an hour and half a second and an eighth, which is substantial for an eighth mile. So I was pretty happy with that. But you can hear in that last clip, uh, the clutch started slipping between gears. Um, and I kind of figured we we're starting to have an issue. So I decided I wanted to make one more test hit and take the air filter off just to see if it gained us anything. Um, so I quickly went back up to the lanes and as I was pulling up to um, the starting line I accidentally hit the kill switch which is fine I can usually bump start the bike um, and the marshals tried to help me bump start it and it just would not go as soon as I let off the clutch it just felt like I was rolling in neutral even though it was in gear so uh, this is when I kind of figured the clutch was cooked yep. No, nope. clutch is gone. Huh? Just run the whole 660 that way. It'll work. No. <laughs> I am not ready. Ah, uh, the clutch You're is gone. Lucky to get that out of me. <laughs> oh, that went wrong. No clutch. No clutch. It's gone. It is really. I knew it. When they kept, like, when I would shift, and it'll go. Ugh. Yeah, I can't even push start it. All right, as you saw in that clip, obviously we cooked the clutch on this thing, which is due to a couple of reasons. One, me launching it at the drag strip. These old bikes, even if it was stock, doesn't really like to do that. But with the extra power, I don't think it really likes to do it at all. <laughs> so um, I expected the clutch to go on this thing. It was the original clutch from 1968. As far as I know, it's never been changed. Honestly, I'm glad that went before anything else. If you guys are unaware or if you're new, to the channel, the uh, engine of this thing is bone stock. Obviously, we've added a bunch of stuff to it, but the internals, uh, nothing has changed. It's just been refreshed with new rings and I honed the cylinders and just cleaned up everything. But um, all the major components are stock. So the fact that it's holding eight and a half pounds of boost is amazing to begin with. But um, all right, enough of me rambling on. 
we'll get the clutch cover off and we'll dive into this thing. All right, I got our clutch cover off, which is over here. You can see the amount of clutch material on the bottom of the side cover. So we were cooking the clutch pretty good, which I expected. Um, but other than that, it looks good. Uh, the oil filter, which on these bikes is just a spinner um, that catches the debris and then you clean this out. And that looks like it's mainly just clutch material as well. So the engine seems pretty happy just besides the clutch can't hold the power. All right guys, I got the clutch basket torn down and my clutch plates and discs sitting over here. And I found something pretty interesting. So on these early 175s and the 160s, uh, they should have five friction discs. So these here and four uh, plates, which would be these. And a mod you can do to allow you to run one more friction disc and one more plate is to mill down these slots to a greater depth uh, to be able to run an extra plate and disc. Or you can uh, take a later CB175 clutch basket that has that increased depth already and swap it into uh, these engines. And it looks like already, somebody's already done that because this one has five, had five plates in it with uh, six, six uh, friction disc. So that's great. I don't have to uh, buy a new clutch basket or modify this one. So we're already ahead. If we go over here, I have a new clutch. That's by a company called New Friend, but you order it from Capellini Motorsports, which you can get their stuff on eBay. They make, they're an Italian company and they make a lot of really high end performance stuff for the 160s and 175s. Uh, more majority of this stuff is way out of my price range, but the clutch kit uh, is not bad. I think this was 70 bucks and you get uh, your six friction discs. Uh, so these are the old friction discs and you can see the new ones have quite a bit more meat on them and new plates and upgraded springs. So these have a little bit larger wire diameter so I'm gonna get these discs soaking in some oil for a couple hours. We'll come back and we'll throw it in the bike. All right, it's a couple hours later. I've had these soaking in oil and I went ahead and degreased our steels. So I should be good to throw this thing back together. All right, clutch is all back together, just as a sanity check. I like to just pull in the clutch, make sure it's actuating. Everything looks good. It's definitely stiffer. It's noticeable with those new springs, so, which is good, should help us, but I'll get the cover thrown back on, we'll put some oil in it, and uh, I guess we'll fire it up. All right, I got this thing all buttoned up. It's got oil in it. Uh, I adjusted the clutch, so we should be good to start it. But real quick, I made a couple changes off camera in the last couple weeks I just want to talk through. First one being I put a small pulley guard on the bike just for uh, the testing we did at the drag strip the other week. 
I'll have to contact ECPA to see if I need to enclose the entire belt and if it has to be an aluminum or not. So I still have to do a little bit of work on that, but uh, that was a nice reassurance when I was testing it. Uh, the other big thing we did, um, we now have it set up for how we're going to run it in Arkansas, and that is with a 34 uh, tooth pulley. With this setup, it'll make around 11, 11 and a half pounds of boost. We haven't ran it on this pulley yet. Uh, at the drag strip the other week, we were running it on a 37, which is about eight, eight and a half pounds. So this is kind of, this is as far as I want to push the bike on stock internals. And this is probably pushing it farther than it wants to go already, but I think we need the extra power. So yeah, as it's set up right now, it's kind of set on kill, if you will. This is kind of as, as much as I want to give it. Technically I could give it more, but I just don't want a piston coming out the side of the engine. So with that being said, I also want to make one big change before Arkansas to help this thing live a little bit longer. And that is switch from E85 to just straight alcohol. So switching to more specifically M5 methanol from VP Racing. With us using E85 already, um, it puts us out of the pump gas class into the fuel category. And once you're in the fuel category, you can use pretty much any fuel you want. So since we're already in it, we might as well just send it and put the baddest fuel we can in it besides doing nitro, obviously. But the main reason I want the methanol, though, is to keep the intake charge temp down. So when we're running the eighth mile, it, it's really not bad. We gain about 30 degrees intake air temp over the course of the eighth mile. Um, but I'm a little concerned going the full mile, how much intake air temp uh, will increase. So my idea is obviously, so we're not running an intercooler or anything. So I have no way of controlling intake air temp besides uh, doing something like methanol. I do want to take it to the drag strip one more time on the methanol setup, make sure I get the fuel dialed in for that. And then we're just going to leave this thing alone until October. All right, I'm going to go ahead and spin the engine over a little bit without the fuel pump and ignition turned on just to get some oil to the heads, head and uh, we'll fire it up. still running well um every time i make the pulley smaller it idles better and better which makes sense because uh how these roots blowers work they give pulses of air so the bigger the pulley the time between those pulses is greater so it's uh, intermittent the map sensor seeing intermittent uh, pressures so when i go to smaller ones that time is less it's a more constant flow of air and the bike just seems to idle a little bit better so that seems to be running well I adjusted the clutch a little bit more and uh, I'll do it. I'll adjust it again once I take it on the uh, street or track. But yeah, we're kind of getting to the final stages of this thing, uh, getting it ready for Arkansas. The Arkansas meet is October 5th through the 7th, I believe. So we're gonna make sure we're good and ready for that. I think we may take it to the drag strip one more time on methanol just to make sure those that tune is dialed in for the boost numbers we want and make sure there's no hiccups. But yeah, that's gonna do it for this video. Again, as always, I appreciate you guys watching and have a good one.